A shriveled rosemary bush was left as a harsh winter's inheritance, yet spring's transformative power was already pushing out new growth all over the garden. A few kale plants had survived through the cold with the help of human ingenuity. Early spring is when we crave fresh greens the most. It just so happens that it is the worst time to harvest anything. This hunger gap continues until early spring crops break the annual fast. But this year I had devised a way to harvest salad greens while frost and late snow still threatened to upend a gardener's plan. I had built this bigger cold frame in the beginning of winter using wood I had laying around for years in a glass picture frame. I was testing out the cold frames as a way of extending the harvest and potentially providing me with fresh greens throughout the inhospitable winter months. I was both surprised and disappointed at how it performed. This cold frame was much larger and taller than the one I had shown in a previous video. This was actually the first one I had built around November and sold cold hardy crops like Russian kale and arugula as soon as I had set it up. I sowed the plants thickly intending to harvest them as small salad greens, picking them on demand. At this point in late February they were showing vigorous growth enough for me to harvest the salad but honestly that had not been the case throughout winter. In fact this was the first proper harvest I was making and while the kale looked scrumptious, beautifully decked with pearls of dewy droplets, they had struggled through winter's long and painful labor to birth the spring. I was amazed at how the single pane of glass had managed to keep these seedlings safe from prolonged and deep frost, uncharacteristic of Maryland but they had grown painfully slow. And it was not just because the weather was cold. It was the lack of sufficient light that made me question the validity of trying to grow greens through winter, at least in my location. They had sprung in growth in the recent more light-filled weeks. I collected a plate full of fresh greens and picked some tender spears of chives just poking through the mulch to make myself a delicious and simple salad. I am on the north facing slope of a small valley and that limits the sun exposure my garden gets during winter because of the sun's low arc. Add to that the presence of taller trees and hills on the horizon and there is just not enough light to justify growing during December and January. But I would happily recommend using a cold frame in early spring when there is more light but the cold is still lingering. Back inside, I went about concocting a delicious and healthy dressing to accompany the fresh garden greens. To complement the spicy flavor of arugula and kale, I squeezed an orange into a bowl with about a teaspoon of tahini sauce. I sprinkled salt, to taste, directly onto the greens. A touch of powdered cayenne pepper would spice up the dressing, counterpointing the sweet orange. This was going to be a minimally processed salad dressing with a twist. While I had not tasted it before and was in fact creating it on the fly, I could foresee that the creamy, slightly bitter ground sesame seed tahini sauce would pair well with the acidity and sweetness of the orange. The orange scent would add dimension with the cayenne adding kick. The greens themselves were not super spicy since the cold weather tends to temper their animus promoting sweeter tasting compounds to be produced. The bright flavor of the young chives would add a new flavor note complementing the salad. And indeed this was delicious, bursting with fresh flavor. The cayenne was a great touch. It was the perfect way to close a dreary afternoon. Coming up in the next block, I will show what became of the cold frame. Could it actually serve as a nursery for producing kale seedlings without having to raise them indoors? This and more right after this commercial. Suburban Homestead is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. You can support this channel through Patreon or by buying art through my Etsy shop. 
I'm always in the lookout for new techniques for growing food. As I saw my kale plants growing from seed inside of my experimental cold frame, it dawned on me the idea for using it as a nursery to raise seedlings directly outdoors before the start of the season, without having to waste energy and space indoors with grow lights and trays of seedlings. I had sown the kale seed thickly, intending to grow it as a cut and come again crop of baby kale leaves for salads. But could I actually transplant them now the outside temperatures had gotten better? I decided to test it out, but before I could dig up and separate the seedlings, I had to prepare a space for them to grow unprotected. I moved my groundhog protector cages and went about clearing the weeds that had formed over the soil during winter. They were actually really easy to remove since my soil, every year, becomes more and more soft due to repeated mulching. I tend to leave all the remains of crops on the ground as roughly broken up mulch, but as winter passes, soil organisms tend to break it down as plants like ground ivy take the opportunity to cover the soil. I used to think that was a bad thing, but I have realized that these plants cover and protect the soil when I can't, so I don't get too annoyed when come springtime I have to roll back this blanket of vines to plant my crops. I selected a spot in the middle of kale plants to allow extra space for the remaining seedlings and went about carefully extracting a clump of seedlings to transplant. I was using my sharp Hori Hori garden tool that I think is very useful to cleanly separate plant roots. Kale plants are more forgiving when it comes to transplanting unlike some other crops that would never be able to be relocated and still produce well. Also, moving from the protected moist environment inside the cold frame to the windy and chilly outdoors could prove to be too much of a shock for these plants. Because I had so many of these seedlings growing, I was not too worried. I knew that they would ultimately have more space to grow and stretch out, that is, if they survived the potential transplant shock. I carefully separated the clump into groups of two to three seedlings and planted them about 10 inches apart. I tried to disturb the root ball the least that I could and made sure to firmly pack the soil around them once planted. They looked very healthy with a bright green color. If this experiment worked, it would mean I would not have to devote time and space growing kale seeds indoors. While I think the plate germination method I seem to favor works great and the plastic cups allow the seedlings to grow big and strong and suffer little shock once transplanted into their final homes, not having to do this would be awesome. While I love gardening, being able to simplify tasks and free up time to enjoy the garden is always my goal. To create streamlined processes that produce more with less effort spend less energy and outside resources is what I want to do. Once I had finished transplanting the kale into its final location to hopefully grow into exuberant plants, I put back the cover on the cold frame and returned the cage back to its place lest the groundhog find the scent of fresh baby kale wafting through the cool early spring air, stirring up in them hunger pains, waking them up from their underground dens. Before I could retire for the day, I had to do one more essential thing and that is to add mulch. It would not only protect the soil and preserve soil structure and fertility, it would also protect the newly transplanted seedlings from the drying effects of the cold since a few light frosts were still being forecast. I had dried up branches from an evergreen tree I had used as insulation on the cold frame during winter, so I decided to repurpose them as mulch by letting the fine dried leaves fall over the transplanted kale creating a mat of organic matter. The Hori Hori tool was great at helping to chop them up. I could only hope this would provide enough protection for the kale to establish itself and develop. A few days later, the kale plants had several leaves shriveled up. There had been a few frosts and these were not great signs. Would they survive? 
Well, a couple weeks later, I came back to check on them, and while they were still struggling, I could see that there was hope. Some small new growth was fighting to live. I could sense that all it wanted to do was to grow and prosper. Only time would tell.